Welcome back to Greg and Bill's Guitar Uproar. Today is the 4th of November, 2021, and this is the 10th episode, and our last for, you know, maybe a few months. I've got so much work i got to do right now, and uh, things have gotten really busy with the Prairie Sun movie. Uh, Bill, how you doing, man? Great. Doing, doing fantastic. Yep. That's cool. That's cool. So we've, we've had a, both uh, had a couple busy weeks. Uh, busy month. We took a couple, couple weeks off, maybe four weeks in there. And uh, I was uh, a guest at Billy Idol's concerts at, in Las Vegas, and that was at the, uh, the Cosmopolitan. I was asked to just go and hang out, and I ended up working, so. Last week I did a jam with Tony McAlpine, which was a live webcast as well, and uh, that was fantastic. All right, and we're going to cut to that right now, too. So what were some funny things that happened? I mean, Tony was joking that you weren't even there. Yeah, yeah, I know. I was, I was literally standing, like, you know, uh, right on the other side of the camera. And he's like, oh, Billy's not here. He must be on his bike somewhere or something like that. You know, it's just, yeah, the whole time. And I even got text messages from people going, man, I hope you're okay. You know, the, the Tony said you're not there yet. And I'm like, I texted back going, I'm here. He's just messing with you, you know. How long have you known him? Well, I mean, I originally met him when the very, very first time I met him was 1988. And that was just at San Jose had a, had a guitar show. I guess they were trying to compete with Nam, and it was it failed. It only lasted one year. Um, but I remember walking through uh, the aisle and I saw Tony coming. He was walking towards me with uh, Jeff Watson from Night Ranger. And at the time, I had created a guitar pick. It, it's, it's, well, not like this pick at all. Um, actually, where I, because I used to work at a trophy shop and I had access to a, to a drill press. So I remember I'd always be playing my guitar, you know, at 17 years old, and I'd be playing my guitar and my fingers would swipe and it would get on the pick. And my pick would slip and spin around. And I thought, yeah, what if I drilled holes in this, right? So I, so I drilled a 16th inch hole and then I drilled 32nd inch holes. And I, and I just did these patterns on there. And I thought, well, this is pretty cool. And I started playing with it and it never, never spun after that. So I remember going to the show and I saw Tony say, hey, Tony, you know, I'm a big fan of yours, blah, blah, blah. And look, I made this pick. And I showed it to him and he looks at it, puts it, he goes, well, what'd you do? Put it in your hand and hold it and drill it? And I was like, no, I used a drill press. And from that moment on, the sarcasm between him and I it's never stopped. And then I met him a couple years later, uh, 1992, he was doing a, a clinic, I think it was, at uh, Union Grove Music in Union, in, uh, Union City. And uh, met him there, and he, he ran out of eight by tens. So I had a photo of Ingve that I had taken at a show in San Jose, and I said, well, can you sign this? And he looks at me and goes, that's Ingve. I'm like, oh, I know, but can you sign it anyhow? And he did, and, and I still have it. Um, so I've known him you know, met him years ago, but we didn't become friends until 2014. Yeah, he's a ball buster for sure. I'm gonna insert a little clip of uh, your outtake. It's been in another episode, but it's just so funny. I'm gonna pop that up again. Why don't you talk about your first experience of uh, going to Prairie Sun, why you wanted to go to Prairie Sun, taking the tour, working there? So, so 
when I was a kid, very, very Wait, young. You, what? He was talking. You should give him some time so he edits on talk right yeah, at he's the He's going to edit just fine. Yeah, but you, he stopped fucking breathing. You jumped right in his last breath. Give him some space. <laughs> Fuck, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this will all make the uh, director's cut. <laughs> So, when I was a kid, very, very young, much younger than Tony, I heard <laughs> Edge of Insanity. And uh, it, was, it was the album right there. And I remember looking on the back of it and seeing that it was recorded at Prairie Sun Studios. Didn't know where Katati was, never heard of Katati, nothing like that. Didn't know what Prairie Sun was. And then I heard all the other albums by all the great musicians that recorded there. And um, what went... I ended up moving up to Santa Rosa and living about 15 miles from Prairie Sun and decided I wanted to go by there and check it out. When I drove by, they had a gate. I couldn't get in. They wouldn't let me in. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I figured the way to get in is to call them on the phone and ask how much they would charge per day and then find out if I can get a studio tour. So I actually got in. I remember driving up the gate and I remember thinking to myself like, I wonder who's here recording. Like, who, who, who it was nobody. It was an off day. There's nobody there. But I thought, this is amazing. All these great albums that were recorded here. The most important thing about music is being able to contribute to an art that you didn't start. So it's an honorable thing if somebody's influenced by something that you've done. Because after all, what you're doing is contributing to something that is an art. And if they get into the arts too, that's a great thing. It's like you're part of that whole process. And I think it's a it's a great feeling. It's you know it's it's really good. It's a really good feeling. So, I uh, I embrace it. I really do. But we can still do it because our heroes are still doing it. You know. Oh, that's nice. I mean, don't let it go to your head. <laughs> no, it's true though. Because um, I feel the same way as you do. But you know, one of the greatest things about being part of the whole movement was meeting and working with. So many other musicians that are guys that I looked up to. So I felt like, you know, at the same time, I've told you that a thousand times, right? Here I am sitting with, you know, any great artist that I've worked with. And I'm like, I admired your music. I, you know, and here you are, you know, sitting on a, in a, in a one-on-one thing. And, you know, work with, uh, you know, Dennis Chambers. The same thing happens. You work with Bunny Burnell. You work with, you know, George Lynch. You work with... You know, you Steve Smith, you know, you work with Billy Sheehan. And I'm like, I used to I used to watch you, you know, and here here we are working together. And, and you, you, that's a good thing. That's a good that's a really good thing. Because it's like spreading the, you know, the whole the whole wealth, the whole reason why, you know, you do what you you do. You feel like you're on the right track of, of getting something done. Do you feel do you feel like that, too? You want to exa- you know. Tell us a little bit more about that. Or? Here's the thing. I didn't realize he was we're asking me a question. We're getting ready to wrap it up, so however you want to, you know, because the very end of the movie is going to be everybody's, you know, kind of, you're going a little bit deeper, you know what I mean? But, oh, oh, really? Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Let's go deep, Tony. Let's go, <laughs> deep. go deep. Let's go deep. Maybe I'm going to get my knit cap on. I want it. So, we'll cut that in. Do you ever feel well, that I, way? I, yeah, I mean, I just, you know, I mean, I played with a lot of my heroes, you know, growing, you know, the heroes that I grew up listening to, you know, and, but I mean, you know, guys like, you know, Cliff Williams and, you know, Simon Kirk and guys like that. And, yeah. and you know, I mean, and it's Mike Mangini and, and growing up, I mean, it's like you listen to their stuff and you, and you, you wonder like, you know, how did they get to where they are? Yeah. You know, like how did they get to record an album? How did they get to play with who they play with? And then you get the opportunity to play with them. Right. You know? And then you think, I wonder if that influenced somebody else to think the same thing. Hmm. You know, and it's just cyclical. It just keeps going on and on and on and on. You know? But as artists, that's what you do. Right? That's you, you, you create and you hope to inspire and you hope to, you know, no matter if it's a little kid or a student or whatever, you know, you're the teacher. And since, you know, I put out my list of people that are in the in the movie, it's, it's really funny. I will say that... Um, you know, Mike Varney's been super helpful in trying to connect me with other players. And a couple of years back, I did a, uh, I gave away a guitar and I asked folks to donate. And then I donated all the money to Jason Becker. And I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to interview him for the Prairie Sun movie. But, you know, I've contacted Paul Gilbert and, you know, we've contacted some other folks. And um, it's funny, man. We've got a, a list of, you know, like 15 people, really great names. 
And, uh, you know, there's a few more I'd like to get. So we'll see what happens when we've contacted people and, and, and other folks on forums have asked me, what about this guy? You know, it's like a list of like 10 other people. And I'm like, all I can do is ask, you know, I can't beg them. And, and for me, I'll ask once. And if I really care, I'll ask twice. But when someone doesn't respond, there's not a whole bunch I can do. You know, I'm really doing this um, on a zero budget and it's going to look great. It's going to look fantastic. We're going to, uh, you know, for me, it's going to definitely go on Amazon and then I'll have all the footage that is not going to make it into 90 minutes will be available on like a Patreon, uh, you know, you, you can subscribe to and, you know, you get a bunch of extra footage because there's a ton of it. I mean, there was like an hour's worth of stuff with Tony and yourself. Um, same for everybody else. Like, you know, if Rudy Sarzo did 30 minutes, maybe two minutes will make it into the movie. You're just looking at how many people are in there. And there's just no way it could all fit. I mean, we did Mike Varney, Stoney Curtis, Doug Pinnock, Simon Phillips, uh, Jeff Martin from Badlands and Racer X, and then a bunch of people sent in clips too. So there are a ton. There's probably, I think there's 20 people. Um, you're in it. I'm in it too. You know, I'll be the narrator throughout the whole thing, but it's going to be rad, dude. And, you know. You, you know what they say. I mean, not, nothing attracts a crowd like a crowd. So once you start getting, you know, these Paul Gilberts and hopefully the Marty Friedman and Jason Becker and other people, you know, want to be involved with it. Well, just today I had Chris Duarte texting me back. Yeah. Mike, Mike Varney hooked me up with him. So we got on a text. So we'll see. Ho hopefully I can get him in the movie, but I don't know next time he's going to be in L.A. So we'll see what happens. Let me tell you a story about the first time. Make it quick. What? Make it quick. <laughs> yeah. No, let me tell you a story. So it's my 21st birthday, and me and a couple of friends of mine were out in San Jose, you know, celebrating my 21st birthday, and and it's about probably you know 12 o'clock at night, you know, 12 o'clock in the morning, and we wandered into downtown San Jose, and at the time there used to be a club down there called JJ Blues, and it was the blues place to be in San Jose in the Bay Area. And we walk into this place and it's empty. There's nobody in that place except for the bartender and a guy pushing a broom. That's it. And on stage is Chris Duarte. I've never heard of him. I've never seen him. Nothing. And he was playing that show as if it was Madison Square Garden and he was the headliner. Just, to, I mean, we stood there, all three of us, me and my friend, in awe of this guy on stage, just playing like he was the, the, the second coming of Stevie Ray Vaughan, you know? And he was the nicest guy afterwards. We talked to him, told him how much we enjoyed the show. And, and you know, yeah, because he, he did a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, mixing or mastering at Prairie Sun. Yeah, it's going to be cool. So I'm going to be back up there next week. Hopefully I'll get this edited before then, but we're going to do a lot of B-roll. I'm going to do a commercial for Muka. And you're going to be up there too. We're going to be hanging out. So I, I, I've been looking back in the footage and it's like, Folks are going to be really stoked to hear these stories. And, uh, you know, you've never heard a Project Driver story with Rudy Sarzo talking about Tony McAlpine. But I, I, it felt really good because, you know, we, we were all gathered there with one collective vision, which was to make it the best record possible. Uh, being in a band with Tony McAlpine was limitless musically because he could play anything. As a matter of fact, we used to play stump Tony, we were asking him any obscure song. Okay, can you play this obscure song? And he would say, sure. We'll be right ahead and play it. You know, what can I say? So it, it was like, hmm, okay, let's see where we can take this. You know, we, we took it as far as our imagination could go. And then Tony took it even further than that. So it was really a joy and, a, uh, and, and an honor to play, you know, with these guys. You've never, you, I have never seen Tony McAlpine talk in a setting about his records or, you know, heartfelt about the music industry. And, you know, everybody is given some sort of uh, narrative on, you know, a heartfelt message of what the music industry means to them. And, you know, with it being Prairie Sun, it's like, that's definitely a story that's not been told. Yeah, and Muka is obviously appreciative, too, of, of everything. And, and, you know, like you said, that, you know, he told you that, you know, this documentary has made him realize kind of his role 
that he has played and that the studio has played and, and made him kind of think back and relive some memories that he forgot about. You know, so I, and I think it's going to do that for a lot of people, a lot of people involved, a lot of people that are that are in the documentary, people that are going to watch the documentary. You know, they're going to think back to the times when they first heard these albums and they first heard these players and, and think, wow, yeah, that was an exciting time. I did go see the Eagles on uh, Saturday night, uh, last Saturday. And dude, man, I, I tell you, man, that, you know, these guys are in their 70s. You know, Joe Walsh, Timothy B. Schmidt and Don Henley, they played three hours, took a 10 minute break and just crushed every song. And they had, you know, Deacon Fry on, on, you know, guitar, lead guitar, vocals, rhythm guitar, and he's just like his dad, you know, Glenn Fry, Vince Gill's in the band. Vince Gill, wow. I, I mean, just, you know, yeah. I mean, at one point they had 80 people on stage with the full orchestra, the full, you know, full orchestra and uh, full choir. And, just, I mean, the production was amazing, the sound, everything you would expect from an Eagles show. Well, you know, and, and seeing Joe Walsh again, because this is the third time I've seen Joe Walsh, and, and he had his talk box out, and it inspired me. So I broke out the talk box last night for the show, you know, and that was fun. Did they do a... Uh... Oh, yeah. that up, didn't I? Such a killer tune, man. Funk 49. Um, I'd like to mention that Prairie Sun recording go check out prairie sun recording uh, mooka's got some specials running now that he wanted me to mention so check those guys out at prairie sun just look up prairie sun recording and you'll find it and then contact them you know if you want to have that retreat where you can stay at the facility and just you know stay there and record in a state-of-the-art facility and and uh, uh is that San sonoma county considered sonoma county you're 10 miles something like that away from santa rosa and that area is just amazing, beautiful. Well, Bill, thanks so much for these 10 episodes. Yeah, my pleasure. And uh, everyone have a great holiday otherwise. But you can catch me at my YouTube channel, um, you know, forward slash Mara Music. Just look up Mara Music, Greg Mara Music and Films. Uh, you can catch me at gregmara.com, everywhere forward slash Mara Music, Insta and Facebook. I'm not on Twitter. Bill, where can folks find you? Uh, BillLanero.com, three L's. Uh, YouTube at Lanero Music, uh, Twitter at Lanero, uh, Instagram guitarist Bill Lanero, and uh, Facebook Bill Lanero. All right, thanks so much, guys, for tuning in, and we'll catch you on the next one. <laughs>